In this module, we will apply the knowledge gained from module one and two to analyze two case examples. We will start with a simplified real life case study and build up to a more complex one. In the first part of the lesson, we will reflect on two simple case studies, one from Boese, Uganda, an urban slum in Uganda, and the second from North Palarute, Barangay, Molo, Ilio city of the Philippines. We will refer to these communities as BU and MBI respectively. These case studies reflect the unique challenges of sustainable waste and resource management in terms of city resilience and material productivity, respectively. BU is predominantly a poor, peri-urban slum area, five kilometers away from the major central business area of the capital of the country. BU is bordered on all sides by major urban areas and has therefore become the home and residence at night for many poor urban migrants who work in the major urban centers in the day. With its population growth rate, BU has rapidly expanded the construction of unplanned buildings in the slum. The poor drainage and sanitation systems, however, means that BU is fast encroaching on the wetlands and formerly uninhabited areas. Moreover, the lack of well-planned and accessible roads, sanitation and drainage services, and waste disposal and management mechanisms have resulted in unsanitary environmental conditions in BU. Wastewater flows around houses and drainage systems have become breeding grounds for mosquitoes and other diseases. Due to the high population density of the slum, municipal and domestic solid waste is accumulating at a high level. BU has no access to sustainable waste management services due to the inaccessibility of roads in the slum area and the inability of the people to pay for waste management services. The neighborhood of BU is covered in wastewater and garbage, including plastic waste. BU is also affected by seasonal floods, which causes loss to properties. In addition, BU lacks secure access to electricity and also has insufficient sources of energy for cooking to support the daily energy requirements of its inhabitants. What is the problem? Poor disposal of garbage is the major cause of flooding in BU. People impacted by flooding lose their livelihoods and belongings, as well as time spent drying out their flooded houses, which also exposes them to further health hazards. The unsanitary conditions from wastewater and unmanaged garbage have worsened, contributing to breeding of malaria-carrying mosquitoes and other disease-causing pests in the BU slums. Poor waste management systems also contribute to increased impacts from flooding. Who does it affect? Flooding affects all residents in the area, but women are especially vulnerable due to their low socioeconomic status, fewer opportunities and family responsibilities that confine them to home. What potential approaches may be used to improve conditions and reduce the impact of flooding in BU? How can sustainable waste and resource management initiatives help the BU community improve its resilience and better adapt to climate flooding during the rainy seasons and heat waves experienced during the dry seasons? How can stakeholders be identified, engaged and involved in this initiative to improve their resilience and adaptation to these extreme weather events? One sustainable waste management response approach implemented to control flooding in BU was used to change residents' behavior, inspiring an intrinsic desire towards environmental stewardship through educating the community about the need for proper waste disposal. This is done through practical learning sessions and subsequent waste collection from households using color-coded waste bins designated as recyclable, hazardous, and organic. The community will be further exposed to the value and uses of segregated waste, such as making briquettes from combustible substances or selling collected reusable plastics to turn them into profit. This will create intrinsic motivation within the community as members gain income for their segregated waste materials. In collaboration with city authorities and other stakeholders, the project will also advocate for better drainage systems and engineering designs by engaging all key stakeholders in the planning and formulation of processes to reduce flooding due to inadequate facilities such as narrow drainage channels. Can you think of other sustainable waste and resource management strategies to improve the resilience of the BU slum area? You may use the workbook to list down these solutions. How can these solutions be combined with other adaptation measures to achieve better outcomes? What are the implications of implementing these strategies to the social, economic, and livelihood conditions of the inhabitants. Carefully analyze the case below and map out how sustainable waste and resource management strategies can support the resilience 
and adaptation of the inhabitants of NBI. You may follow the set of questions provided to analyze the situation. You may use the workbook to accomplish this case analysis. The urban slum of NBI is densely populated, with a total of over 4,878 residents. This predominantly poor slum is characterized by unplanned wooden structures or houses on raised platforms at the mangrove estuary 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet above mean sea level. MBI is home to some of the poorest urban dwellers, mostly youth, who work in various parts of the city. The household population of MBI is 4674, comprising 1,088 households for an average of 4.30 members per household. Economic activities in MBI are mostly tabletop petty selling and fishing the estuary, among others. NBI also lacks well-planned access roads. As a result, the slum fails to provide its residents with basic public services such as drainage, sanitation, wastewater treatment, and solid waste management. Garbage and wastewater are usually dumped under the raised housing structures. Piles of garbage and wastewater have engulfed the slum community, posing significant public health risks to inhabitants. What is the problem? Due to its location, MBI has become an exchange point where garbage goes to and from the sea. At high tides, trash from the sea is washed into the community and under the houses, while receding tides sweep the same garbage back out into the sea. The river also drains the basin, transporting along garbage, mostly plastics, which are then deposited under the structures of MBI. These conditions, coupled with unavailable urban public sanitation services, create unsanitary conditions and a severe health risk for both the dwellers and the ecological environment of MBI, as well as other connected communities. Due to these unmanaged garbage problems, fish populations have decreased drastically, affecting the individuals who depend on fishing for their livelihood. Furthermore, the emission of waste streams into the environment, washed directly into the estuary, poses hazardous health risks to fish as well as their consumers. Nearby mangroves are also at high risk due to pollution, as well as encroachment by the expanding population of NBI. Who is affected? How are they affected? The unsanitary conditions of NBI harm all dwellers of the poor slum community, but women, children, and the aged are disproportionately affected. Children, women, and the aged spend most of their days at home in this unhygienic environment. Moreover, children, women, and the aged are more vulnerable to ill effects due to their low socioeconomic status. During high tides and flooding, waste is often washed into rooms and households are flooded, with social and economic activities disrupted as a consequence. Water and energy security remain challenging issues in NBI. What are some of the vulnerabilities and exposure factors of NBI that increase their vulnerability to climate change? What role can sustainable waste and resource management play in reducing their vulnerability? How can NBI build resilience to flooding at high tide and high heat events in summer? Who are the key stakeholders and how could they be involved to ensure the benefits of implemented resilience and adaptation interventions are sustained. Community engagement in recycling of plastics as a sustainable waste and resource management practice may help income diversification of the MBI slum dwellers. Do you consider this an option for adaptation? Yes or no? Please explain your answer. At last, we have reached the end of our course. We hope you enjoyed it and that you will make use of the knowledge and skills gained from this e-learning video to support climate action in your work. If you find this course beneficial, please share it with others who might be interested as well. Thank you.